Hey friends, welcome back to another live session. We got a cool study we're going to talk about today. It's Mike Mutzel. Welcome back. I just want to uh, say thank you for for tuning into these rather informal live videos. Sometimes, you know, I get it super excited. I read studies and I'm like, you know what, we got to go live and like talk about this. So um, I want to thank all of you that are here. Uh, if you're watching the replay, I want to thank you as well. And uh, I listen to your comments. Many of you have commented and said, hey, Mike, I'd rather watch the videos where you like you know, sit there and talk about studies as opposed to just these lives. And so what I want to, you know, do in this video is just like get right into the meat of it, not let any BS get in the way. So, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of clinical case studies showing that individuals that are diabetic, whether it's type 1 or type 2, uh, individuals that have poorly controlled glucose, individuals that are overweight, individuals that have blood pressure. We know insulin and hyperinsulinemia is linked with hypertension or blood pressure, increased blood pressure. So um, I was kind of curious mechanistically as to what's going on with the increased disease severity, increased rates of hospitalization, increased need for uh, corticosteroids, antibiotics, um, increase mortality in individuals that have diseases that are linked with elevated levels of glucose hyperinsulinemia. So here's uh, basically what the science is showing. And uh, what I'm going to do here is just uh, read to you from this article that I have highlighted right here on, on the video that you can see. Um, it's a little story time, friends. So here we go. Uh, however, uh, the, the scientists say, not only do viruses shape host cell metabolism in order to obtain supplies for viron production, but they also induce a reorganization of the cellular membrane and biosynthesis machinery, which is accompanied by alterations in lipid metabolism that we shall uh, discuss further. So they're talking both about um, not only do viruses uh, leverage and, and kind of hijack cellular machinery. But what they do is they reshape the whole metabolome. And here's specifically when it comes to RNA viruses. So what I'm going to do here is just switch uh, to this little, oh, uh, where are we are right there, switch to this little screenshot. And I'm going to read to you a few, few notes from this. So um, again, the, the reason why we're considering this is the economies are reopening. Many of you are going to be going back to work, you're going to be socializing more. I want to make sure that you have tools at your disposal. And uh, I made a fuller video earlier, and this is just kind of the premise, but um, what we want to do is create a situation in our bodies that are not really suitable for viral replication. Now, I want to give you some proper disclaimers. I, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that the ketogenic diet cures coronavirus. I'm not saying that fasting cures coronavirus. I'm just saying that there is data showing that viruses leverage our own metabolism to increase levels of glucose so that they can fuel their production. So, it stands to reason that potentially, if you could have more glycemic, reduce glycemic variability, have more tighter control on your blood sugar levels, that perhaps your body might be less hospitable of an environment for a potentially a lethal virus. So here we go. Let's do some more uh, story time, shall we? All right. Now, this is in the context of rhinoviruses, and there's more papers on this that I'm going to be reviewing for your uh, reading and uh, information. So this was really interesting. I think I have it highlighted right here. Uh, yeah. Uh, the amplification of glucose. Uh, here we go. Uh, however, the amplification of glucose uptake was detectable as fast as 1.5 hours upon infection, uh, which ruled out transcriptional control of this process. So uh, essentially, upon infection, viral metabolism, once it gets inside your cells, helps uh, causes a, an increase in glucose levels so as to recreate and kind of repurpose potentially uh, carbon substrates to increase the viral load. Who would have thought? And so, again, we're not really hearing much about this, are we, uh, in the medical, uh, from, from the, the medical powers that be. Uh, we, we just hear messages like, hey, minimize transmission by wearing a mask, wash your hands, and so forth. But, gosh, I mean, what if you're exposed to this thing and you just went to McDonald's and you had a, a, a super size me 32-ounce um, soda? I mean, you know, if viruses like sugar... Gosh, I mean, are you adding fuel to the fire? Are you increasing the propensity for a very small little piece of, you know, aerosolized pathogenic uh, virulent uh, material to really uh, pick up root and, and take off in your body? I don't know. Uh, you know, yeah, studies will have to bear this out. But I think it's important that we understand that, that our host machinery not only is leveraged by the virus, but our own metabolites are utilized by infectious agents to replicate. 
And so look, if we can potentially make it harder for those metabolites uh, to be readily available by having tighter glycemic control, not having high glucose variability, which is what we talked about in a video that we did live uh, is it what, two weeks ago, Saturday, sorry, one week ago, Saturday, about nine days ago, where I shared with you the cell metabolism data that show that high glycemic variability was a problem for individuals that are infected with this novel human coronavirus and led to a lot of challenges. Uh, so that's all we have for you today. I'm going to get to some of your questions right here. Uh, and I uh, appreciate you all being here. I know it's a little bit later than we normally do these. So um, here we go. All right. Um, Jim D is in the house. Jim, thanks for being here. Uh, let me just uh, look on my phone. It might be easier for me to just quickly look down at the phone. Um, and by the way, I did see the bandwidth was buffering. I apologize for that. Um, sometimes I can't totally control um, every aspect of these live uh, videos. But here we go. All right. Ah, man. Okay. Okay. This is where the replayers get pissed off. They're like, Mike, dude, what are you doing looking at your phone? Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the questions. Okay. I got a question right here that, that came in. It says, is fasting bad for your health? Well, okay. Define fasting. Are we talking about intermittent fasting, time restricted, time restricted feeding, prolonged fasting? It totally depends uh, what state of health you are. So this is one thing I recently did a video. I want to say in the last 60 days about trying to customize your feeding fasting window. Okay. So check that out also at courses.highintensityhealth.com. We have the OMAD intermittent fasting and fitness e-course, 27 bucks. It teaches you exactly how and the data points you should be looking at to customize your fast. Your fast is about as specific as how much weight you should be lifting on your squat. Uh, it, it depends, like right? it depends on your, on your goals, your age, um, whether you, what are you trying to squat for? I mean, there's a million and one things that, 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 you know, your squat rep ranges are contingent upon. Are you trying to induce hypertrophy or are you trying to be a power lifter, right? So, um, check out that e-course courses.highintensityhealth.com. We help you figure all this stuff out. Great question though. Um, Pat and Mike says, Pat and Mike, it's funny. My, my younger brother, his name is Pat. So we were always called growing up, Pat and Mike, Pat and Mike, Pat and Mike. So uh, that's funny that your YouTube handle is, is named that. Okay, uh, what do we got? Jim D says, yo, good evening, Mike from Cape Carnival, Florida. Thank you, Jim, for being here. You're probably, if you're, you and Rob Bacon and Spive21 are our most loyal commenters, I, wanna, I really appreciate you. Jim, I would love to meet you someday at a seminar. Uh, T. Nicole says, uh, nice, finally caught a live. T. Nicole, thanks for being here. How, how do they, are, are, are they cool? Uh, do you like them? Um, I know that, that sometimes the audio is delayed with my speaking, which I can, I can assure you, I, this isn't any uh, hokey poke funny business after the fact. Uh, this is really live. Um, so, um, uh, T, T. Nicole says, I appreciate this. Uh, there is a lot of fear mongering, a lot of misinformation out there. It's really crazy. Dr. Fauci, just yesterday, Joe Rogan posted this video. He was saying that sh people shouldn't be wearing face masks. And I'm like, I've been saying this forever because uh, my father, um, sorry, my stepfather is a, a fireman. And he, he was saying like, look, you know, when they were going to fires, it was like face mask for as little as possible because you don't want to just be recirculating all your CO2 and get... Um, increase uh, blood levels of CO2. So yeah, I mean, it's funny that the the pendulum is always swinging, you know, and the clinical studies on face, face masks specifically for reducing the transmission of a respiratory virus is weak at best. All right, I digress. Here we have SPY21. I was just saying that. Uh, uh, Maya Emmy says, Pat and Mike, uh, yep, I never have gotten sick, uh, minor colds, etc. Good for you, uh, Maya. Uh, and friends, if you're listening right now live and you're digging this, please hit that like button. That's That lets YouTube know that more people that are subscribed to our channel should be pinged when we go live. And that lets me know that I should do more of these live videos. Okay. Uh, impulse response says, my mom is recovering from COVID. She is doing a 16 out, 16, eight fasting protocol and low carb. Uh, I, I, I think that's a good, a good idea. Uh, hope I wish your mom the best. Um, so, um, I have a few clients who are, are recovering in the active recovery phase. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's super interesting how certain people tend to get over this faster than others. I mean, it's really uh, interesting, the individual response. Um, there's a question about autophagy that I want to get to here um, from Ernesto says, how does autophagy affect the virus? Okay, so um, 
And again, I, I don't want to always plug courses, but I want you to understand the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass talks about autophagy in so much more detail than I can articulate here in five minutes. But let me just make it very brief for you. And, and autophagy is so nuanced. There's multiple subtypes of autophagy. Uh, the subtype of autophagy that's contextually important in the context of a viral infection is called xenophagy. Xeno meaning for, uh, foreign phagy, engulfing. So autophagy is an intracellular cleanup process that helps us break down fat by lipophagy, which is a subset of autophagy, specifically for breaking down long chain, chain fats. Uh, uh, mitophagy helps to is a subset of autophagy that breaks down uh, mitochondria. So xenophagy is involved in intracellular pathogen uh, eradication, including viral eradication. But it's not yet known exactly if upregulating autophagy would be s helpful um, in this particular situation. So I don't yet know the answer to that question. I think it's a really good question. More data is coming. If you're an autophagy nerd, the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass over on courses.highintensityhealth.com has you covered. Uh, I spent years putting that stuff together. Uh, not all at once, but uh, you know, an hour here, an hour there uh, over years of studying. So it's a really good uh, resource for you. Um, but so we don't, we don't really know when this, with this particular virus, Tim 100% says, Hey Mike, I asked this question a while ago with no answer, a bit off topic. Sleep is prioritized for health. So what is your opinion on an edible cannabis product to improve sleep? Well, Tim, it's a great question. And that's why one of our long going show sponsors is helloned.com, uh, because they have a broad spectrum hemp derived phytocannabinoid blend that works amazing in terms of improving sleep and recovery. Here's why I like cannabis for sleep. Uh, I'm not a big THC f fan. I know people get results from it, but I do like the CBD, whether it's derived from, uh, you know, hemp or cannabis. Here's why. Um, it can improve your sleep without monkeying with your sleep architecture. And that's why I think it's important. So um, this is why I don't like something like Ambien to, to uh, or, you know, opioids to increase sleep because they'll totally screw up your sleep architecture, which is no good. But great, great question, Tim. Um, so again, one of the phytocannabinoid blends that I recommend, again, is from helloned.com. Use the coupon code HIH. I love their product because it's biodynamic and organic. It tastes really good too. Great question though. Um, all right. What else do we got? Kyle says, uh, totally believe it. I think I had COVID. They wouldn't let me test. And my only, only felt good was, uh, oh, oh, wow. So he only felt good when his glucose was in a tight range, I think, Kyle. So that's interesting, Kyle. So what you can do now is get your IgG antibodies tested. If anyone's interested in that and you're in the continental United States, we can get you that test. It's only 119 bucks through LabCorp. So check it out. I've uh, tested a lot of clients uh, actually in the last few days. It's been kind of fun. Um, dude rude says kicking myself for being late here. Uh, dude, don't even worry about it. Uh, you can go and rewatch the replay. No problem at all. Uh, BBB bop says is THC bad for sleep? You know what? I, everyone's different. You know, um, I have siblings that can have THC and sleep like really good. For me, uh, it doesn't improve my sleep. And it, it, I am thinking about things, wondering like, hey, what's going on? I tend to be that paranoid person with THC, which is why I don't use it. Everyone's so different. Um, uh, so now I don't know if cannabinoids increase the quality of your sleep, but I know from the research on hemp-derived CBD that it doesn't negatively affect your sleep. So that's, that's what I know about that. Um, so yeah, uh, friends, uh, grateful that you're here. Hopefully, you know, you think this article is interesting. And again, we've done quite a few videos. If you want to nerd out about immunometabolism, we've talked about leptin, we've talked about adiponectin, we've talked about all that. Um, you, know, you know, I'm working on a new book to dive into the details, but our 2014 book, Belly Fat Effect, really spent a lot of time uh, exploring this concept of immunometabolism. And this is what we're talking about now here, where viruses can reprogram our machinery to increase levels of glucose so as to kind of finance or increase growth and increase viral load. So, um, you know, does it make sense maybe that 
if you keep your glucose down or have tighter glycemic ranges, that perhaps there's not a lot of carbon substrates for uh, you know a virus to radically increase its glucose load. We don't know that, but it's it's an interesting hypothesis and, and one that we're kind of exploring. So um, as always, friends, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you have an awesome rest of your day, wherever, wherever you're watching this. Uh, some of my favorite blood sugar supportive agents are linked below through our company, Myoscience Nutrition. If you want to save on some things that are amazing, again, dietary supplements cannot treat, cure, prevent, diagnose any disease. We're just supporting your overall health. One of my favorite ways to support blood sugar health is with, um, with, with berberine hydrochloride. It's amazing, uh, a natural compound that uh, if you use and ever look at your uh, blood sugar levels, uh, it, it, it really does uh, support those levels nicely. So links are below. Uh, use the coupon code HIH at checkout. And uh, yeah, appreciate you tuning into this live video. Hit that like button if you thought it was of worthwhile. And I uh, got some more cool content coming to you this week. Have a good evening, all. Catch you later.